Because if you let too much fear in right now, if you let too much content in right now, you are going to go crazy. You're going to go crazy. If you start imagining what your kids are going to be like at their graduation of high school and they're in second grade, you're going to go crazy. Keep it in a bubble. Like, let me give you a Bible verse. Sufficient is the day for its own trouble. You got enough trouble in today's bubble. Trouble bubbles. That's part three. I'm going to do part three. Will you help me preach part three? But, but Jesus, it, it gets crazier than that. When he got to the house, give me the next verse, please. When they came to the home of the synagogue leader, now we've got his home where the issue is and his position, and he comes into the, the home and, and watch what's going on. Jesus sees a commotion, people crying, wailing loudly. Everybody's tweeting and, and blogging and, and streaming and talking and pontificating and a million opinions. And Jesus went in and said to them, why all this commotion and wailing? This child is not dead but asleep. And they, verse 40, laughed at him. So watch what he did. You say you want to be like Jesus? You want to be like Jesus? After when did the miracle happen? After he put them all out. After he put them all out. I feel a delete party happening in, in your contact section while I preach the word of God. Now, don't delete everybody. He took the disciples with him. You don't put everybody out. You don't put every thought out. But sometimes you have to believe in a bubble, right? Sometimes you can't ask everybody. Sometimes, I mean, I mean, you gotta ask your boss, you gotta ask your wife, you gotta ask the important people, you gotta have a few. But it's too much right. It's too much right now. God sent me with a word to get you in a in a in a bubble. He said, everybody leave. Because sometimes breakthrough only happens in the bubble. In the bubble. Thank you, Lord. He's showing me things. He's showing me things. He's giving me things right now as I speak to you. And then while I'm getting those things, there's other things being like, oh, that's dumb or wow, that's really stupid. But I'm in the bubble. I got I gotta keep it in the bubble. I got to remember while I'm preaching that I'm not preaching for somebody who's going to criticize what I say or think it's weird or think it's crazy. So, so, so if you think I'm out of my mind, that's the goal. That's the goal. My mind has made me miserable for most of my life. They, said, they laughed at Jesus. They laughed at Jesus. Not because he was weird, but because he, he, was, he was focused and he knew enough to know. The original, did you ever see this in the text chunks? I bet you did. You probably preached this before. But Jesus had the, the original NBA bubble. Not the National Basketball Association. No buts allowed. Come on, let's have some fun together for five minutes. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it like this, but I'm going to. We could probably edit it for the archive. Get your butt out the bubble. The Bible said, does the Bible say butt in verse 40? Does the Bible say butt? But they laughed at him. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get up. You can do it, but it's get out. Why about get out? But get out. Get get out. Get up. Get up. I'm doing this. Some breakthroughs can only happen in the bubble. Where you got a few friends. Where you got a few objectives. Where you got a few priorities. Not trying to be everything all the time. No, I'm gonna do this and this and this, and I know who I am. And I'm not trying to prove to anybody that I'm something else, and I'm not trying to play a different role. Come on, just because we have to wear physical masks doesn't mean we have to wear emotional ones. I thought it was so weird when they said masks are… It's weird to see people in masks. I said, not for me as a pastor. I've been looking at people in masks. Some 
So Jesus knew that sometimes it takes a bubble to maintain belief. After we get done with this, you'll, you'll put in the, in the chat or in the comments this week what the bubble means for you. I mean, like, I need to have like five minutes when I start my day to remind myself where my help comes from. I did it today because once I come here, there's too many stimulus. Like, I'm gonna be like, oh, the room's too hot, the room's too cold. Why is that person not here? Why is this person there? Why don't you the same? Can I get to the thing? Did I do the thing? I should be too much. I sit there and breathe in the bubble for a minute, right? And it really helped me. I don't always do it, but when I do, it helps me. Out loud, I started saying, I, I popped the thought bubble and actually prayed. I said, God, thank you today that you have given me something that will help and heal people. I thank you for it, Lord. And I thank you today that as I preach, I stand in your authority, not my own. I thank you that you've given me what I need for the role I'm in. And maybe you want to start your day that way. Maybe you want to start your day that way. Maybe you want to clarify your priorities again. You know what? I've been so busy over here. Then, then of course, after he uh, made the bubble, he, he showed him what a breakthrough looks like. I don't even want to read it because I'll be tempted to preach it. Because the Bible said when he went in where the child was, verse 41, he did the impossible. He did the impossible. He did the impossible. One daughter thought she was a woman with an issue, but another daughter that they thought was dead when he took her hand. Wow. What would it feel like for something that you thought was dead? Maybe not a person. Joy, clarity. I took it by the hand. This was not how Jairus thought it would happen. This was not what he believed for. It was better. It was better. It was even better. What if God wants to? Burst your bubble to give you something better. Thank you, Lord. I receive it. I receive it. God, I don't want to live my life trapped in my bubble. You know, Jesus took this girl by the hand. Jairus said, Will you put your hands on her and she'll live? Remember that? That's how he scripted it. That was his blueprint. That was his blueprint. But but Jesus didn't 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 bless him. According to his blueprint, he took her by the hand and said, Talitha Kum, little girl, get up. And when she got up, he, Jairus didn't even ask for this. Look to verse 42. Immediately the girl stood up, began to walk around. She was 12 years old. At this, they were completely astonished. Next verse, he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this. Keep it in the bubble. 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 Some things are for you. And told them to give her something to eat. He threw lunch in for free. When I say that God's got something better, God said, I'm going to put fries in the bag that you didn't even ask for. I'm going to feed you something that your faith didn't even know to reach for. I'll call you back and make you a daughter. I'll fix you a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I'm a provider. Speaking of extra, can I give you another scripture? Now, I promise you, I have preached you enough where I can close the Bible in good conscience and we can go on and, and watch something else, or you can stay with me while I traverse centuries of history and introduce Jairus, the man whose bubble saved his faith. The man who believed even when his daughter was dead. The man who kept moving forward even through the worst pain of his life. Like Levi Lusco, like Fly Tie, my barber. The man who pressed through unimaginable pain to experience restoration. And I want to show Jairus about a man he never met because he lived hundreds of years before him. His name was Naaman. And Naaman had a bubble too. See, Naaman was a great man. 
That's what the Bible says. He's a great man. He was good at fighting. I want to introduce Naaman to Jairus because they're very similar. They're very similar. I think they would be good friends if they met. I think they'd be good friends if they met. I think they'd be, I think they'd be good friends. So Jairus was a synagogue leader. Well, they probably wouldn't have been great friends because Jairus was Jewish and Naaman, Naaman was over Aram, uh, modern day Syria. And Israel and Syria didn't like each other. So they would have a lot to get past. Um, sometimes the people God wants to bless you through. Sometimes the people God wants to use in your life are going to be people from totally different backgrounds. AKA, God wants to burst your bubble. <laughs> I thought about uh, having a prop up here, blowing the bubble, you know, a sound effects or whatever, but I was like, no, this isn't a cute message, it's a powerful message. Just because I'm saying it as a bubble, it's so much bigger than that. It's like, you know. I never knew Monk's Corner was going to marry Miami. <laughs> Holly was from Miami, Florida, and I always thought I would marry a Southern girl. And uh, Holly's not. Let me tell you how not Southern she is. She thinks boiled peanuts taste like dirt. At least she did. I showed her boiled peanuts. Some of y'all in other places of the world, you're like, "What is he? Is he speaking in tongues?" He said something about a peanut being boiled. But see, I grew up in the Monk's Corner bubble where boiled peanuts were a delicacy. Mwah. I ain't crack no crab legs. I'm cracking the boiled peanuts. And from the gas station. The homemade ones were a treat, but I ought to do it at a gas station if we need to. You never had a boiled peanut in your life before you came to Charlotte. That woman tasted boiled peanuts in my mom's kitchen. I was so excited. I was like, I had my dad fry. I was trying to impress her. I had my dad fry some shrimp and I had some boiled peanuts. My mom, it was a whole family effort. We were just dating. And she tasted them and I watched her to see what she would think. She said, it tastes like dirt. I laid my hands on her until every Miami demon came out of that woman. And this day, I stand to give God glory. She cooks me boiled peanuts once every two weeks, and she eats them too. Let's praise God for the miracle. Come on, I got a testimony from death to life, from Miami to Monk's Corner. A man told me I couldn't stand to watch you preach because you were white. But God used you. A man told me I couldn't stand to watch you preach because you were young, but God used you. A teenager told me I used to not like to listen to you because I thought you were boring, but then God used you. God might not use who you thought he would use. Naaman was a great man. Oh my God. Many victories. That was his position. Look at it in verse 1. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded. That means in the public places. In the public places. In the public places, it was great. But the Bible says, you see it in verse 1? But is it up there or did I make it up? The Lord gave him victory. God's given you victory. God's given you some things. But he had leprosy. Nobody would have known that under his armor. The woman was bleeding on the inside. Naaman has something that is eating away at him, even as God is working through him. And both, both can happen at the same time. So, Naaman, uh, he kind of demonstrates what I was telling you about that often God will spend you, send you an answer through an unexpected person that you didn't even ask the question to. God will answer your prayers in places that you didn't even think to ask. When that thing happened with school last year, I did not know that you were going to be my workout partner. But that's some of the best times of every day for me. I'm talking to my, my son, Elijah. Sometimes when I'm down there, I don't know whether to be a dad or to be a trainer, you know? 
because I want to yell at him, and then I also want to be a good dad and comfort him. Like, it's okay, you don't have to get one more rep. I don't know which one, which one to be. And God used something we were both frustrated about with school to get us down there in that pound. You never thought you'd be throwing around those big weights either. At first, we wouldn't work out together because his weights were too small. I didn't feel like re racking that much, you know? I'm a big guy, you know? But now we, we lift together. He's getting strong. I never thought my son would be my workout partner in this season. I know it's a silly analogy, but sometimes God will use something to bond you with your child. I mean, it's just amazing. We talk about everything. In that. I'm going to write a book about the things we talk about in that workout room. I already wrote the introductory chapter. I'm going to wait till he's 50 years old to publish it in case he you know, doesn't listen to any of it, but maybe I'll just give it to him. Maybe I will never write the book. I don't know. See, I'm getting to this point in my life where I would start tr stop trusting so much in what I thought. Bust a bubble. Bust the bubble. Stop thinking that there's only one style of ministry that God can bless you through. Stop thinking that ravens can't bring you food. Stop thinking that sticks can't part Red Seas. Stop thinking that only the first one in gets healed. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.